Hello, thanks for listening in. It's great to have you with us. The purpose of this short video is to show you how to calculate the stress tensor for the classical electron in the vacuum gauge. We will use the vacuum gauge solution to eliminate problems of particle stability and infinite self energy. Then we will quantize the electron by calculating the Dirac energy momentum tensor. The vacuum gauge is defined by the vacuum gauge condition. The potentials are null but can be eliminated completely by removing a factor of 4 pi times a constant surface charge density. The new 4 vector may be referred to as a vacuum dilatation vector and its 4 divergence is shown here. Now let's borrow some more concepts from continuum mechanics and use the new vector to determine a vacuum strain tensor and an associated vacuum stress tensor. We note here that the vacuum stress has only a single Lamé coefficient, which is exactly the outward pressure exerted by the surface charge density. Using the vacuum strain as our field quantity, we can apply Lagrange's equations in the usual way to determine equations of motion. This set of equations is still Maxwell's equations, except that in this new interpretation, the velocity fields are now momentum flux fields that are moving at the speed of light. The magnetic flux field still circles around the particle, but the electric flux radiates outward, representing a violation of conservation of energy on a cosmic scale. To be clear, the fields in the red box are nothing more than electron Maxwell fields E and B, except multiplied by a fundamental constant with units of surface charge density. Oddly enough, we can derive a vacuum Lagrangian from the well-known electromagnetic Lagrangian shown here. Introducing our new definitions of vacuum stress and strain and reshuffling, an extraneous term appears with no equations of motion. This leaves a vacuum Lagrangian, and we note that the point charge density has been replaced by a new point source with units of force density. While this vacuum Lagrangian gives us the correct equations of motion, it's still not complete because we need to add an additional term to provide stresses associated with radiating fields. We do this by moving the vacuum stress tensor off axis and inserting it into the Lagrangian. This is a symmetry operation which adds a linear term proportional to the vacuum dilatation. Equations of motion are not altered by this term, but will add a radiation term to the symmetric stress tensor. We calculate the canonical stress tensor by using the vacuum strain as the field variable. The last term, called lambda mu nu, is determined by the linear term in the Lagrangian and is the transpose of the tr uh, stress tensor delta mu nu with a factor of one half in front. The terms quadratic in stresses are not symmetric and, like the electromagnetic theory, must be symmetrized by removing a divergence-free term. The total stress tensor for the vacuum theory is now displayed here in the red box. The quadratic terms are exactly the symmetric stress tensor of the electromagnetic theory, and we can write an equivalence relation between the two theories. Particle stability at constant velocity can be demonstrated by writing out all the terms of what we'll call the total electromagnetic stress tensor. Terms in the vacuum tensor can be rearranged and we can write the tensor as shown here. This makes it easy to see how the electromagnetic stress is removed at eta is equal to 1. When this condition is met, the total stress tensor takes on a very simple form as the covariant derivative of the vector r nu. Now, a to equal 1 is the same as the condition rho is equal to Re, and this is an equal time 3 sphere in Minkowski space, shown by the red circle in the space-time diagram. Of interest here is to note that the instantaneous retarded position of the charge is not at the center of that 3 sphere. Now let's examine the total stress tensor at the electron radius a little more closely. The leftover stress at 80 equal 1 is the tensor E mu nu. This tensor can be written out uh, term by term as shown here. A scalar contraction of indices determines the energy density of the classical electron, which is simply mc squared divided by the volume of the 3 sphere. Next, we can quantize E mu nu by introducing the 4 momentum and associating the space-like vector u nu with Dirac gamma matrices. 
The resulting quantized tensor is E mu nu sub Dirac, and if we sandwich this tensor between Dirac spinors, we derive the Lagrangian for a Dirac particle. A well-known operation on this Lagrangian is the determination of the Dirac energy momentum stress tensor, and we write the unsymmetrized and detailed form of this tensor shown in the red box. Finally, the Dirac energy momentum tensor also follows directly from E mu nu. We do this by substituting the well-known quantum mechanical operator directly into this tensor. Now we sandwich our tensor with Dirac spinors again. The resulting tensor is the Dirac energy momentum tensor, but now we determine its bilinear form in terms of the energy momentum four vectors. Let's write the vacuum gauge version of the constant velocity stress tensor again. To accommodate particle accelerations, we'll introduce a small correction to the vacuum strain tensor we're calling epsilon mu nu. This tensor is easily constructed from the dilatation vector and the perpendicular component of the particle acceleration. Inserting this new term that we'll call zeta mu nu into the stress tensor does not change the term proportional to the metric. However, three additional terms are added to the stress tensor. Believe it or not, the slightly modified tensor is still exactly the symmetric stress tensor of the electromagnetic theory. Finally, we include the vacuum tensor and define the tensor R mu nu. Now we can write the total stress tensor for the classical electron as shown in the boxed formula. Thanks again for listening in. We hope you've enjoyed this short video and have a great day.